Bob Woodward's new book reveals Donald Trump knew about the severity of COVID, admitting that he downplayed the virus to Woodward in newly released audio from February and March. So a number of journalists are actually calling out Woodward for not releasing the tape sooner and prioritizing book sales over informing the public. One of those journalists is editor-at-large at the, at the Jacobin, David Sirota. He writes in his new piece, instead of using Woodward's platform to sound an alarm, he aided and abetted Trump in wrongdoing. And David Sirota joins us now to talk about the tapes and that reporting. Great to see you, David. Good to see you, Good David. Good to see you. Hey so, so, look, obviously the main story is Trump's failure and inaction here and the lies that he was telling to the American public. But make your case about why you think that Woodward should have released those tapes earlier on in order to inform the American public. Look, I think a journalist has a duty to warn. Uh, and when the president of the United States uh, is on audio tape, uh, saying that uh, in early February, and let's remember, early February, we really didn't know very much. The public didn't. It really wasn't, in a lot of ways, on the, the public's radar, the American public's radar. Uh, it certainly was uh, in other countries, but it really wasn't a central issue in the United States. And there are lots of questions about the transmissibility of the virus. There were lots of questions about the lethality of it. Here you have a reporter who has the president of the United States, the head of government, on tape in early February in an on-the-record situation. I mean, that was confirmed by the Washington Post. It wasn't off the record, where the president says uh, essentially that the virus is extremely uh, lethal uh, and is transmissible uh, through the air. The journalist has that then sees the president going out and downplaying uh, the virus, as Trump himself admitted. Uh, he sees the president in, in some cases going out there uh, and you know a few months later saying, you can come to my rallies, it's completely safe. He's got an audio tape of the president saying, actually, uh, the virus is uh, much uh, more lethal than the flu. Uh, it is airborne. And he sits on the tape for months as tens of thousands of people uh, are killed. Now, that doesn't mean that the deaths are Bob Woodward's fault directly. But, but again, I go back to the, to the point of a, a duty to warn. The job of the journalist is to uh, publish information so the public is informed. And there's two real issues here. The public should be informed, for one thing, if the president is not telling the truth, one job of the journalist is to make the public aware when uh, politicians aren't telling the truth. And the, the second point here is that there's also a duty to warn about a public health crisis. And, and Woodward didn't do that. I mean, I, I don't understand how he was waking up every morning, seeing the death toll and sitting on that tape. And, and look, I know the argument as well wouldn't have made it wouldn't have it wouldn't have done anything. It wouldn't have ma made a difference. But that's not how you make news decisions as a journalist. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the idea that you're publishing information and, you know, no information that you publish ever means anything. So it's, it's not a big deal that. That's not the way news decisions are supposed to be made. When you have a tape of the president saying what the president said, that is by definition news. That the tape itself is news. To sit on that tape for months, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. Well, I guess just to play devil's advocate, which is that his primary method of publishing is his book. He released the book excerpts whenever it was time for publication. He had a fulsome view of the Trump administration's handling of the virus. And to the point you made, it wouldn't necessarily have made a difference. So are we all just carping like is this a real thing about journalistic ethics or is it a bob you know we hate bob woodward because he scooped us all no no look i i think there are plenty of times where you can say i, I held this for a book and it didn't make any any uh th there were no implications for it contemporaneously that's what we're talking about here the the, the timeliness of this uh, there are, you know if if woodward had pulled out it had had Trump said something about the about the 2016 campaign or said something uh, about something that was a, 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 a fact that was fixed in time. That is different. We're talking about an unfolding public health crisis uh, in the moment, in real time. And he had a piece of information from the president of the United States about that public health crisis in real time and suppressed it. I mean, that is the opposite of the job of a journalist. And let's think about, I mean, I said, you know, recently uh, uh, that that in that piece that it's like if Bob Woodward had gotten the uh, Nixon White House tape, the Watergate tapes, okay, and sat on it for eight months, 
uh, and didn't publish it until a more opportune time for his book. That would that's not what happened, but that would have been outrageous. This is even worse because this is about an unfolding public health crisis in real time. So what he says, his argument is, um, he tells me this, the president, this is uh, Woodward's rebuttal to this critique. The president tells me this, and I'm thinking, wow, that's interesting, but is it true? Trump says things that don't check out right. And then he said, what I needed to figure out was what did he know and when did he know it? Basically saying that, like, okay, the fact that he said this thing didn't necessarily mean that it was true. And so I had to do more work to do the research to and, and back it up that this was actually factually accurate what he was giving me at the time and that was the reason for the wait. What do you make of that? Well, two days before uh, Trump said those things about the lethality of the virus and it being airborne, lawmakers, the Washington Post published a piece about how there were some lawmakers on the Hill pushing the, the Trump administration uh, to take the virus more seriously. You can imagine that two days later, a blockbuster story by Bob Woodward saying the president uh, has been downplaying the virus and, ha and has said on tape that the virus is lethal and airborne, that could have emboldened those lawmakers in real time pushing for real action. It didn't happen. And, and I just, I, I think that, you know, if it, the, the, the kindest interpretation of this is that Woodward sees it as a political story. Oh, this is a political story about the president. He didn't necessarily see it as a public health story mm. in real time. And that is, again, I, I find that mind boggling. Mm. Yeah, well, I, think I think it's a really interesting argument. point. Thank you so much, David. So great to see you. Thanks, David. Th thank you. Coming up, Team Rising, we're going to talk about a seismic shift in a couple of battleground states. That's when Rising continues. <laughs> 